here with UFC lightweight Melvin Guillard coming off a big win on Spike TV here at UFC 109. When the judges were getting ready to announce the, the fight and the winner, how are you feeling? Uh, I knew I had won. You know, I, I felt I won every round. You know, he, he landed two good takedowns in the first round. Um, I didn't get as many punches off as I wanted to, but, you know, he when he took me down, he didn't do anything with it, you know. And the only reason I was, you know, sitting real still was that I didn't put myself in a bad position. And, you know, just being patient and playing that, that ground game, you know, because he's a black belt in, in jiu-jitsu. You know, you don't want to go and try to overthink a jiu-jitsu guy on the ground. So I just waited till the per perfect opportunity to explode up and get up, you know. And I think, you know, when they were getting ready to line us up to call the winner, I knew in my heart I won that fight. A lot of fighters have sought out Greg Jackson to revive their careers. What made you go to Greg Jackson's camp? Um, when I fought Diaz, I, I talked to Coach Greg. He was in my locker room before and after. And, you know, I had good training in Houston with, with Saul, but I didn't have a room for the elite guys, you know. And me and Joe Stevenson, we became best friends, and Joe kind of pitched it to him. I got to talk to him myself and ask him, and it was just an honor that he accepted me because, you know, it's a small window for the family. They don't let a lot of guys in. You know, we have a stacked room already. For them to let me in, you know, and, and, and put a little hope behind me, it was an honor, you know. And now that I'm working with Coach John, Coach Winkle John and Coach, um, Coach Greg, it's like the best feeling in the world to give them the first win, you know. That's why I said tonight, I started out 0-0, and, and as of tonight, I'm 1-0, you know, as far as being under Coach Greg. And I want to continue on my road to that championship. You've been in the game for a very long time, about 50 fights or so. Yeah. Um, you're talking about this starting over. What's the hardest part about having to let all that go and, you know, try and go in there fresh? Well, you know, I was I was 16 when I turned pro. I started fighting at the age of 15. Um, you know, I was young and just explosive. I was just raw talent. You know, now I have an opportunity to have a great coach and team behind me where I can still have my raw talent, but they put the wisdom behind me. Being at Coach Greg's, it's not more, it's not really about the physical aspect for me, it's more about the mental, you know, and that's what I love about him, you know, the way he talks to you, the way he, the way he approaches you, he talks to you as a man, you know, and I think it's not just about fighting, it's about making you grow as a man, you know, and just being up there, man, it's a humbling experience, you know, after losing my father, man, I lost all hope for a while, and now I feel like I got something back, I got a part of me back, and I just want to, I just want to prove to the world that I'm not a failure, you know what I mean, everybody always count me out because I get in trouble for certain things, but it won't be any more of that, you know what I mean, I got my head on straight, I got a great wife, I got a loving family, man, and I just got to be there for them. Obviously, you grew a lot as a fighter in Greg Jackson's camp, as we saw tonight in the Octagon. How did you grow as a man in that time? Well, living with Joe and Ike and all those guys, man, you, you know, we, we all just keep pushing each other, picking each other up, you know. Even through our bad days, we pick each other up. And it's like being it's like being in a frat, you know. It's like having that, that, that fraternity. We have a fraternity that, and we have this bond that nobody breaks. And I just I just knew I had to grow up at some point, you know. You know my mom, she's getting older, and I don't want anything to happen to her, you know, and she worries a lot about me because out of six children, I'm the only one that's always gone, you know, so just being able to call my mom and say, hey, everything's going great, you know, and then tonight her being able to see me fight, and my mom even told me, son, you look like a different person. For that to come from my mom, man, that's an accomplishment in itself, you know, and I don't have to prove anything to anybody in this world but her, you know, because when my father left me, he just wanted me to focus on my mom and my sisters, you know, and for my mom to know that I'm okay, it makes me sleep better at night. You've obviously done a lot of growing both in and out of the cage over the last couple months and um, I'm sure over the years. What do you still have to work on? What are you going to improve both in and outside of the cage going forward into your next UFC fight? Well, right now, you know, um, my judo coach, Doc Round Trip, he's working with me round the clock with my judo. Uh, as of right now, I'm a brown belt, but I'm, 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 he told me it'd take a year to get my black belt, but I'm, I'm pushing for six months. You know, that's just me. I have that competitive edge. Um, I'm going to do a couple of judo tournaments, try to compete, take some guys out. Um, want to get my black belt, and, you know, I'm going to keep growing from there, man. I'm, I'm about to be 27 next month. You know, I got to put the, the childish things aside, man, and just face reality. I'm a grown man now. Can't nobody hold my hand for me. You know what I mean? And getting in trouble at, 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 at this age, it really puts you in a bad spot. You know, when you're young, you kind of get away with things. But, you know, I've had my, my time of wrongdoing, and I just, want, I just want people to see that I've changed my life for me. You know, it's not because of everybody around me. It's because it's something I chose to do. And I just want to prove to everybody that doubt me that, no matter how much you doubt me, I'm still going to be pushing. I'm still going to be striving. I strive off of people's ne negativity towards me. 
again, congratulations on your big win here at the UFC 109. Any last words for fans? Um, just look out for for explosive Melvin Gillard, man. I'm looking for highlight reels. Me and Coach John, we're trying to put some highlights together. I almost had one tonight, but it didn't come through. But I'm going to just keep training hard, man. And the, my fans can expect a, 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 a positive, explosive Melvin Gillard every fight from here on out. Actually, one more thing. Because of your highlight reel, you're known as a young assassin. Now you're obviously uh, you ask mature. Me when I get older, huh? <laughs> yeah. Let me, let me tell you, man. When I get older, I'm still gonna be the young assassin, man. I'm be fought. I'm gonna be like Coach Randy, 46 years old. They still gonna respect me as a young assassin. You know, once you get a name, you can't just disregard it because of some words. You know what I mean? And watching Coach Randy is expiring to me. You know, that man's 46 years old, and he's still taking out young guys my age. You know what I mean? I, I just feel like age is only a number. It's how you take care of your body and how you nourish your body and treat your body like a temple. As long as I take care of my body, I can be 58. I can be like Uncle Herschel, and I can still <laughs> knock guys out. So it's all good. I'm still going to be a young assassin.